My name is Alex Morris. I'm 48 years old from Warwick, Rhode Island. What I like most about bladesmithing is it's challenging, and I believe that if we don't challenge ourselves, we don't grow. My name is Charlie Bridges. I'm active duty Army stationed in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. I spend every day at work with so many soldiers that I can't keep track. But when I get home, I get to turn all of it off, throw a piece of steel into my forge, and I get to make something out of nothing. My name's Adam Coonrod, and I'm a firefighter paramedic in City City, New York. My wife and my kids are very supportive and like that I do knife making. My two children, they're both makers as well, and I couldn't be any prouder of both of them. Today, gentlemen, we're flipping the script. You guys are telling us what your challenge is going to be. We're going to make a buoy in a go-my fashion. Blade length is going to be 10 inches, 15 inches overall, 2 inches at its widest point, and two additional parameters would be two handle types in the handle and a lanyard hole. Good luck. Work hard. Your time starts now. I understand go Maya, and I like to make it. I have three pieces of 1095, put 15 and 20 on the outside of them, and then a single piece of 1095 on the outside of that. I have a much better time getting a forge weld on shorter pieces of steel than I do of trying to forge weld a six inch bar. I want to ensure that I have enough steel to draw out completely, but I also want to make sure that my center with the testing is going to be done, the edge, is uh, all 1095 high carbon. Now I just got to wait for it to get up to forge temperature. While I'm waiting for my billet to heat up to proper temperature, I'm going to preheat my dies. So when you do go into the press, it doesn't draw out that heat as quickly. I know that it gives me a little bit more working time so I can set those welds. I'm feeling very happy about my welds. Oh, yeah. I think I've got the right length to start my blade, so now it's time for me to go in and actually define a tip. No, I find it ironic. Charlie wanted to go gold mine because he wanted a thicker blade, and it, it's already very lean. I rough hammer out my handle area, then I start working towards the uh, tip to start drawing out the clip point on the end of the Bowie knife. This is a lot of steel to try to move uh, with my hammer. I don't want to waste any more time, so I head over to the press. I'm running out of time. Wow, that's a skinny knife. I'm done with the blade. I don't want to mess with that anymore. I don't want to add any more stress. And there's a quench at a very hot temperature. Screaming off. File check it. I didn't get a hardened blade. This just hit me like a freight train. It was catching a couple of times back in the forge. Yeah. What he should do is let the blade cool all the way down, then file test. You're not going to get a, a correct skating when it's that hot. I have just put a lot of stress on my blade. I am terrified to go back into the quench. Every single quench putting more and more stress on that blade. I've got a hardened blade, total sigh of relief. The last big thing is the quench. File skated off, so I'm confident that I have a hard blade. Not bad for my first gold mine. <laughs> so far, I got everything where I wanted. So I say a little prayer and I go for the quench. Adam just quenched. I notice a warp start forming. Whoa! Adam just warping in the vise, like really bad. Wow. I don't want to go back in for another quench because I don't want to stress that blade anymore. But I need to correct it. Oh, my god! What I'm going to do is a three-pin technique. While I'm waiting for this to cool down, there's a little bit of a temperature. You can fuss around with it and, and straighten it. I've already quenched. This is so dangerous. I'm at eye level, looking at my blade, looking at the judges, looking at my blade. I'm seeing them cringe. Jeez, Louise. Ah, got my heart palpitating. I'm not getting the warp out as good as I want, but I'm going to just move on because I'm running out of time. Five, four, three, two, one. Gentlemen, turn off your machines. This round is over. Woo. All right, Bladesmiths, congratulations. The three of you guys are moving forward into round two of the competition, where you're going to add handles to your blades, turn them into fully functioning weapons. Well, you will have two hours in round two of the competition. Good luck. That time starts now. I'm feeling pretty good about my blade. 
Now I'm gonna head over and start getting my scales ready. My plan is to cut a thin slice of G10 to use as a liner, and then the ironwood fully on the outside of that sandwich together. I'm gonna start getting my handle stock fastened. When I'm trying to get fasteners together, but it's dancing around on me, it's not wanting to play along. Charlie's using his face. Yes, it's a third hand principle. You have one hand, two hands, and the face is the third hand. Finally, everything looks solid, so now it's time for me to start getting this handle into a shape. So I'm getting ready to epoxy this all together. Everything seems to be fitting up nice. I'm going to put it in the vise so it's clamped together while it sets. I'm going to use the G10 as the inner layer and sandwich that with the iron wood. I start putting my handle materials together. I run into a problem trying to make the pinholes line up. I can feel the epoxy start to set up. At this point, I am so stressed out. I'm making little mistakes. I'm not thinking things through. He's worked himself into a puzzle. They're still not matching up, are they? So he's making basically a hot mess. I don't have enough time to make another set of handles. I need to correct it quickly. I think I have enough material left in the handle, so if I flip it around, it will still line up. Adam has decided just to put those on all cattywampus. It looks like shit. I got one handle hanging off the edge. I got one hanging over the blade. But you know what? There's still enough material. I can grind that and flush it up, and it's not going to be a big issue. While I'm finishing up, I think it feels good, but I feel a little slick spot at the back of my handle, so I add some jimping. He's doing a little jimping so your thumb doesn't move around. Because the last thing I want is for Dave, Jay, or Doug to swing it and say that it wants to come out of their hands. I'm going to go with a, a short convex edge because that should hold up well against a handler chop. I'm trying to find a happy medium here with this blade. I want it to cut, but to get to that point, I have to make it survive the antler chop. I think Adam might be happy with his handle. It looks like he's working on his edge. Well, that's a good comeback from Adam, because earlier, he was really having a tough time with that handle. Three, two, one. Gentlemen, turn off your machines. Put down your tools. This round is over. All right, Smiths, this is one of the tests I enjoy, the antler chop. Now I'm going to take your blades and beat them repeatedly and mercilessly into these antlers. Not only will it test the edge retention for your heat treat, but the overall construction of your knives themselves. Alex, how you feeling, bud? I'm all right. All right, let's get to it. Good job, Alex. You survived. Your edge is perfect. Nothing rolled, no glinting, everything's straight. Good job. How are you? Hey, Charlie, how you feeling, bud? Pretty good. I feel good, too. One more. All right, Charlie, you survived. You actually made a very comfortable handle, so good job on that. But we are missing a few pieces of your edge. I can see that grain is pretty coarse. It was pretty high temperature during quenching but everything else is still tight. Good job. Thank you. All right, Adam, how are you thinking? Let her rip. You survived, Adam, good job. Your edge is good. You didn't lose anything. Nothing came loose, good job. Thank you. Welcome to the sharpness test. Now, to find out how sharp your weapons are, I will try to slice through these fabric bags. Alex, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Alex, let's talk about your weapon here. The balance feels good. Now, your edge, razor sharp. Every movement cut cleanly, nothing is frayed. And overall, sir, your blade, you look cut. Thanks. All right, Charlie, your turn, sir. You ready? Let's do it.
All right, Charlie, let's talk about your blade here. It cuts nicely. The chips that you have on your edge here were not a factor at all. Overall, sir, you will cut. Thank you. All right, Adam. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Adam, your edge is sharp. It took no damage during the strength test. It's razor sharp, cuts cleanly to the fabric bag. Overall, sir, your blade, you will cut. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, well, the judges have made their decision. And the bladesmith going home is... Charlie, unfortunately, just didn't make the cut. Jay's going to tell you why. Charlie, during a strength test, you're the only one that took damage. So that's why we're sending you home. I understand. Well, Charlie, you fought really hard and you did a phenomenal job, but it really just came down to that heat treat. Unfortunately, not moving forward in round three of the competition, I'm going to have to ask you to please leave the forge. All right. Thank you. Gentlemen. Well done, man. Good job, man. Although I'm not happy with the outcome, I understand why. But I enjoyed the whole thing. Working around other guys who can forge a blade, that was a ton of fun for me.